the Lord, church. Let's all stand. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, let's clap our hands to the Lord right now. God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your house and to be in your presence tonight. God, I thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do. If he's done anything great for you, let's shout him to the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me this week already. Thank you, Lord, for the breath in my lungs. Thank you, Lord, for the roof over my head. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you have a need, you can make your way to the front right now. You can make your way to the front right now. Let's worship with the worship team as they begin to sing. Aren't you glad we serve a God whose name is above every name? There's no one greater than Him. He is stronger than any other. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm thankful for God that His name is above every name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is none greater than Him. Amen. Well, it's so glad to see everybody in the house of the Lord tonight. Let's greet one another in the name of Jesus right now. As you make your way back to your seats, you may be seated. If you're a guest listening online, we invite you to click on the link in our Facebook page, and it'll take you straight to our Connect card, and we'd love to have your information so that we can get in touch with you. And if you are a guest here in our service tonight, if you'll look at the pew in front of you, there is a Connect card. All you have to do is just scan it with your phone, the QR code, and just fill out the Connect card. It'll take you straight to it. And we would love to get in touch with you. All the ladies say amen. This is your weekend. No kids. And woo, yeah. Don't forget, ladies retreat this weekend starting Friday night at 730. And then also Saturday morning at 10 a.m. You don't want to miss it. And it's only $5. Only $5. And tonight is the deadline for registration. You can register on our church center app, or there's a table right outside these doors. You can register there as well. And don't forget, we have a lot that's going on at PCA, uh, Porter, not PCA, but Porter Apostolic Pentecostal Church. We'd love to have you. We have weekly bulletins out in the foyer, and we also have monthly calendars, so you can stay in touch and get involved with what's going on at Porter APC. And our last announcement is, this is a special day for one special person, and it's Pastor. Today, 
his pastor's birthday. Pastor, we have some cards for you. These are from everybody in the church. But right now, we're going to sing happy birthday to Pastor. I love my pastor. I love everything about him. I love the way he loves God and loves people. Amen. And we'll sing my version, Happy Birthday, after service. Uh, all right. All right, now let's take our offering. Don't forget, there's three ways you can give. You can drop your envelope in the bag, or you can text to give on the number provided on the screen, or you can visit our website at porterapc.org. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this place. God, I pray, Lord, you bless this tithes and this offering to your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
How many of you can say that's true? Boy, that's been true in my life. Every moment of every day, every minute, he has been faithful. Amen, amen. It is so great to be home. Now you have to just kind of get used to me. I know you've had some great preachers. Now, you, now you're stuck for a little while. But it is great to be home. I was preaching for a very great man in a very great church this weekend and uh, talking to them, wonderful church known throughout, throughout the states. And I, I talked to them this week and I said, I want you to know I have loved being here. But it's bittersweet because I am ready to go home. And uh, there's just nothing like being home, amen. I love you very much. Thank you so much. I was in Serbia, and they did something real nice, and I couldn't tell everybody I loved them, so I did like that. And there was shock and awe through the crowd. And one of them came up, and they said, why would you give us devil horns? I said, no, no. I said, I love you. I said, I love you. I love you. I love you. But so just in case, you know, anybody from Serbia means I love you. And I really, really do. And I, I can't believe y'all did that. Um, I can believe it. I just, you, you always go overboard. You do. And that is my life. God has been faithful. I was telling someone this week, they said, oh, well, this happened and that happened. I said, I'll tell you what I can absolutely 100% tell you, be completely honest. Everything I have is because God has been good. God has been faithful. And somebody, they said, well, what's one thing, you know, your business? And it was. My business was successful. My investments were successful, different things. Not everything made it, but many things did. And I will tell you, it's because I've always, there's one thing that was never a question, and that's my giving. I've always believed, and I believe with all my heart, if you're faithful to God, His promise, it will not fail. It will not fail. Tithing is more about trust and faith than anything else. It says, God, I can put you first in my finances. I, I've never understood people said, I can trust you with my soul, but I, but I can't trust you with my finances. Giving is one of the, in fact, God speaks about giving. And don't worry, I'm not preaching on giving tonight. I'm just telling you, I can tell you God has honored everything. God has been good to me. God has been faithful. I owe him everything. He owes me nothing. I live in his debt. And uh, boy, what a song. I love that song. And I want to get into this tonight. I want to be a help to someone, be a help to myself, be a help to all of us tonight if I can. Such an honor. I've been loving, even though I know the treatments are not a great reason to be visiting, but getting to have my wonderful mom and my wonderful dad here. He's halfway through his treatments, I believe, this week. Will this week be halfway? So I'm so thankful for that. Thank you for all the kindness you have shown to him. Thankful for my bishop. Thankful for you fine people. And it is just great to be here. I am. I just won't shout. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. Somebody said, what's 40 feel? I said, well, this is the first day of it. It's feeling amazing so far. Matthew chapter 16. If you have your Bibles. If you don't, let's start getting in the habit of bringing our Bibles can't find your Bible, it's probably on that table where we have hundreds of Bibles. If your strategy was, oh, I'm going to leave my Bible here, so I'll always have my Bible. It worked, but we put it back there, so you may want to get that. Matthew chapter 16, and starting at verse 21 and going through verse 26. Verse 21 of chapter 16 of Matthew says, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must, he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself 
and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I'm going to deliver, if I can tonight, what I feel the Lord has given me. And I'm going to speak on the road less traveled. The road less traveled. Would you pray right now that God would speak to us, that God would anoint me and anoint his word and to speak to every single one of us in this place. Lord Jesus, we love you, and we are so thankful for your goodness and for your mercy. It is that goodness and mercy that allows us to come into this place one more time to be ministered to by your word, to be ministered to by your presence. And I ask that you would speak to every person in this place, all those watching and listening online, everyone in this room tonight, God, ask that you would have your way. And whatever it is in our lives, God, that you want to deal with tonight, would you have your way? We ask it, believe in it, will be done, and we give you all the praise, the honor, and glory to your name, Jesus. And everyone said amen. Amen. Tell someone you're glad they're here on a Wednesday night. And if they meant it, tell them, well, you may be seated. So thankful to have each and every guest. We are so honored and thrilled that you have chosen to be with us tonight. We love you. And we are very thankful that you chose to be with us tonight. Thank you. This scripture, boy, it gets right out of the gate, you know, and Jesus starts talking to him and he starts telling him some of the things that he's going to suffer. He says, you know, we're going to go to Jerusalem and this thing's going to happen and that's going to happen and I'm going to be killed, raised again on the third day. We, we live in an era where any negativity in our life, we look at that as the displeasure of God. We look at someone that is blessed, someone that drives a nice car and this and that, and we assume that God's approval is on their life. In fact, many times when we're going through struggles and trials, oftentimes the enemy uses that and instantly brings condemnation in our life, and we find ourselves critiquing ourselves sometimes harshly and sometimes without cause just as Job did Job man, his his own friend said look what's happening to you the only the only explanation that makes sense for what you're going through is that there's hidden sin in your life Job there's some things that are cuz good things the bad things don't happen to good people you must have something you don't know and Job says I've searched I've, I don't know of anything they say well it's pride Job you're too prideful you won't even admit you've messed up because that is the assumption when my life is falling apart God's not with me when someone's getting the promotion getting the job getting the car then we oh man look God's hand is upon their life can I tell you God is a lot more complex than the zeros behind whatever numbers in your bank account. God's favor and his, whether he is pleased with you or not, is so much more complex than what car you drive. I mean, some people are like, oh, God's favor is on my life. I drive a Mercedes, yes, and you can't afford it. That means you made bad decisions. That doesn't mean God was pleased with you. He's kind of like that lady that went to Dave Ramsey once she said he said listen you have a problem you have a house note you have a car note you don't have enough money to pay both she said well I can't give up that car I love that car he said would you like to live in it because you only can afford one so you can live in the house and get a cheaper car or you can live in your car and they give up the house but you got to do something but Peter kind of assumes like we do. Jesus starts talking about all the things that are going to happen, and Peter instantly steps into the same mindset that we have. Oh, that will never happen. You know, somebody should be like, hey, <laughs> hey, bud, do you have any idea who you're rebuking? The Bible says he rebuked him. It is in us to rebuke the voice of God. Oh, I would never do that. You know, that, that's how Peter started. I'll never do that. I'll never do that. I would never. Let me tell you the, one of the quickest ways to make sure God can deal with you. Anytime the preacher's preaching on something or there's an issue, get the mindset say, you know what, that could happen to me. 
One of the best ways to get in a place where you will go opposite of where God wants you to do is to get a mindset that says, oh, that can never happen to me. No, it can. It can happen to your marriage. It can happen to your family. It can happen to your children. Many times we fall into things blindly for no other reason than we would not allow ourselves to think that we could fall into the same trap that millions of others have fallen into. I could never fall into sin. I could never fall into adultery. I could never find, fall into this or this or this. And we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's still flesh. And if it doesn't die every day, it can fall like everybody else has fallen. I got to get the mindset when I come to the house of God. Hey, there's some th- that, that can happen to me, so I better get to an altar, or I better get a hold of God, or I better get in the Word. I better get in prayer. I, why, that can happen. Well, you've been in church all your life. Yes, I have, but it's still flesh, and it can happen to me. If it can happen to Peter, it can happen to me. And Jesus turns around, and he says, hey, get thee behind me, Satan. Boy, that's some pretty strict correction. There was no counseling. He didn't set an appointment. There were no cookies and milk. He didn't use the Oreo method. Hey, I love you, man. You're doing a good job. I'm proud of you. Listen, you messed up over here. You shouldn't have said that, but you did. You don't say that again, but hey, I'm proud of you. No, he didn't use the Oreo method at all. Which the Oreo method always confused me because the Oreo method of correcting somebody means there's something good, then something bad, then something good. To me, an Oreo is something good surrounded by bad and bad. Makes no sense to me why they got the hard part there. You want to know why the two hard parts are on both sides of that heavenly thing and the stuff in the middle? Something to hold while you dip it in the milk so you don't drop it. That's its only reason for existence. And you leave it in the milk till you can barely taste that part. Or you get the super stuff. What is it you where where is it? What is it you got me, brother Nick? Mega stuff. That, I mean, that's where it's. I mean, that's where it's at, people. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm working on it. He he just turns around and goes straight to it. Get thee behind me, Satan. Boy, there's a message in that right there. God, give me a spirit that can handle correction no matter how hard it is, no matter how to the point. God, help me not to be so tender and soft that I can't handle the voice of God saying, hey, straighten up, fly right, do right. My, but I don't know how I could have handled if Jesus would have been like, Joel, Satan. Boy, I mean, you, you got to be ready. My hat's off to Peter for being able to take that. He, I mean, he took it. But then he goes up and he says, here's where you messed up. You don't want the things that I want. The things that I want don't always look like the things that you think they ought to look like. He says, you want to know what my will looks like? Here it is. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Not his bins, not his Rolls Royce, not his big bank account, not his ministry, not his calling, not his skill set, not his ability. Let him take up his cross. More than your ministry, you need a cross. More than your job, you need a cross. More than your ability, you need a cross. Because the one thing that we absolutely all have to take with us if we're going to follow Christ is we've got to take a cross. And there's nothing about a cross that looks pretty or feels good. That doesn't mean there's not benefits of it. That doesn't mean that God cannot bless you while you're carrying a cross. That does not mean God can't use you to bless the kingdom. That does not mean that God cannot bless you at your job. But it also does not mean that every time you get into the bumpy road of life that you're out of the will of God. And that's who I'm trying to speak to today. There are some people that are discouraged and feel like throwing in the towel because the enemy has manipulated your situation and twisted it to where you think that God's mad at you and God's against you because you can't seem to get out of the ruts of life and somehow you've confused the cross with being out of the will of God. Sometimes the cross takes you into places that does not feel like everything is where it ought to be. It's a cross. Somebody asked, they said, well, if I'm in the will of God, how come people keep attacking me? And that preacher said, well, here's the thing. When you get yourself on a cross, you can get the nail in the feet and you can get the nail in one hand, but 
you can't get the other one. So God puts people in your life to put the nail in for you. Isn't that awesome? Helpful people. I mean, it would, wouldn't hurt if they quit volunteering. But he tells them, he says, listen, but if you lose your life for my sake, See, that goes completely against what we know in today's society. We're trying to save our life. God says, oh, no, lose it for me and you'll find it. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There, there's a poem. Many of you probably have read it. And Robert Frost wrote it. It's called The Road Not Taken. And it says, two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler Long I stood, and I looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, and leaves no step had trodden back. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Hmm. I always read that. I thought that doesn't make a lot of sense. It says, he took the one less traveled. But if you read and you study it, he said both roads led to the same place. That always confused me. It actually wasn't that deep of a poem. He wrote it to a friend of his that he went walking with because they'd always pick a different path. And then while they were walking the, that path, they were always wondering that maybe they should have taken the other one. It wasn't actually that serious. But when I read it, I saw something different. He said I, there were two roads. He said there was one that wasn't traveled near as much as the other one. He said, and I took that one. There was one that was easier. There was one that was, it, you, you could tell people had left a trail. You could, you could see in the distance. There was nothing surprising. you. He said, so I took the other one where it looked like more people hadn't went. He said, it had less wear than the other. He said, and even though the two roads ended up at the same place, I took the one less traveled, and it made all the difference. Can I tell you, in life, we are all headed to the same place every one of us everyone outside of these walls everyone you work with everyone sitting in here everyone in your family distant close we are all headed to the same place 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10 says for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ whether you know truth or you don't know truth whether you're living it or you're not living it whether you're on easy street or you're digging it out we are all going to the same place whatever road you're on we are all find, going to find ourselves in the same place the difference is not where we're going to because we're all going to stand before God the difference is how we show up and the road that you choose to travel between here and judgment is what makes the difference. I can choose an easy road that requires little sacrifice, little commitment, that I can do it my way. I can choose the one that everybody else has taken. The Bible says there is a way that many there be that go therein. And the Bible says there's a way that's less traveled. There's few that be that find it. That means there's few that are looking for it because the Bible says seek and you shall find. He didn't say few there be that seek for 
for it. He said, few there be that find it, which means there were few seeking for it. That means there was a lot of people looking at the numbers and saying, you know what, I think I'm going to go with this group instead of going with this one. The road that you choose to travel is going to determine how you show up when you and I stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The road that we have chosen, not that our pastor made, not that my pastor made, not that your pastor made, not that your parents, the road that we chose to travel. Because here's the thing, I know very little about the road you choose to travel outside of this assembly. I don't know the road that you walk on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. I, I see some evidence of the road you're on on Wednesday and Sunday. But there's a lot of days during the week I don't know what path you're traveling. But one day it will be evident which road you're traveling when you stand before him. That, that's just how it goes. I was with someone th- this week and they told me something and it just it, it, it got a hold of me. He said, I'd rather be miserable and be saved than comfortable and lost. I wrote that down. I'd rather be miserable on earth and saved than comfortable down here and lost. I don't want to be miserable. Yeah, but this is just for a moment. I don't want to not get my way here. I'd rather not let my flesh get its way here and to spend an eternity living in the goodness of God than to give in to my flesh here and to pay for it for eternity. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24 says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He said I had a choice. It was easy street here or I could be where I was supposed to be. He knew when he walked out of that when he walked out of that palace I'm not going to have a butler anymore. Nobody's going to show up with my food anymore. Nobody's going to show up and say, hey, what would you like to do today? The chariot's ready for you. We got the horses ready. What time would you like to take your picnic? What time would you like the bath prepared, Prince? He said, I knew when I made this choice, I wasn't going to get all of those things anymore. But there was something inside that said, hey, there's. I'd rather have the affliction then the pleasures for a season. And that's, that's the key, for a season. It's just a season, and it's a small season. If you'd have told me 40 years would go by that fast, I had no idea. I had no idea. Somebody asked, me, do you have any regrets? I regret that I did not spend as much of it sold out as I could have. That's my regret. It's not that I didn't have another business. It's not that I didn't invest in Dogecoin a lot earlier. It's not that I didn't do this. My greatest regret is that I did not surrender everything sooner. Moses said, I'd rather than have everything that felt good here Why? He said, because there was an invisible God that so changed his behavior that he said, you know what? Forget about Egypt. I'd rather follow this God. He he meant it to the point that when God, he saw the promised land and God said, this is where the people are going to go. Moses had one question. Are you going? Moses, it's the promised land. Are you going? If you're not going, I'm not going. Boy, can you imagine that? Hey, here's a job. Are, is it, are you going to be there with me? Because if, if, if I'm going to lose out at that job, I don't want that job. Oh, look at this relationship. Are, are you okay with that relationship? Because if you're not okay, then I'm not okay. <laughs> okay. 
We like scriptures like this in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. We like these. I like them. Who through faith they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. They stopped the mouths of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. Escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. They turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life. My goodness, that's my kind. That's the kind of living for God I'm in this for. Man, I, I want the greater thing. I want to come in and say, hey, man, my car doesn't even have a battery and it started this morning I got out to get into my Honda and I, I looked and oh my goodness it was a Bentley and I've heard some miracles I checked my bank account today and it's got a hundred thousand I don't know where it came I've heard some crazy stuff and I love that stuff and you love that stuff hey I went in for a doctor's report and it was completely clean I love those reports but then You have to go further. You have to read the rest of it. He says, but while everybody's shouting over that, you know, whoo, that's our God. He said, and, oh, there's more. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. Do you know how big of a deal that is? That means deliverance was offered. They said, no, 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 no. I'll stay on the road less traveled, and I'll take whatever it is. I don't want deliverance from the road less traveled. I don't want deliverance from holiness. I don't want deliverance from sacrifice. I don't want deliverance from the word. I don't want deliverance from the altar. I don't want deliverance from separation from the world. I don't want deliverance. If deliverance means it costs me heaven, if deliverance means it costs me my faith, I don't want deliverance. I'll take the road less traveled. There's a reason it's less traveled. He says that they might obtain a better resurrection. Why are you willing to put up with this? Because this is not the end. This is barely the beginning. This is not. Do you know how small our life is compared to eternity? Eternity would wrap around this room more times than we can even imagine. And our life represents the distance of that bottle cap. And we let the problems and the issues of life in that bottle cap direct what is going to happen with everything in eternity. Tell me again about the offense that made you quit living for God. Tell me again about what some mean little person said to you that caused you to sacrifice eternity. Tell me again what they offered you at your job in that small, minute amount of time that cost you eternity. Tell me again what it was God asked of you that you could not surrender in that small fraction, as the word calls it, vapor. Edwin Burke said what shadows we are and what shadows we pursue my life is but a vapor here and it is gone tell me the problem is is when we're going through the trial it feels like forever but this isn't forever how many of you are over 40 how fast did it go blink and it's gone tell me again what you sacrificed eternity for God let our answer be nothing nothing he says they would not accept deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection and others had a trial of cruel mockings they got mocked like you got mocked they had scourgings, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. Oh, listen, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. But they did not trade the road less traveled. They did not surrender. They did not give it up. You go to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. He says, enter ye in 
at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. It's not about the crowd. It's about the direction. Because that's what the enemy said. How could so many be wrong? Because it's the word. I, I, I thought about preaching on it tonight, but I'm not. I'm going to preach on it later. But we're we, we, we going to get into this word. You want to know one of the problems of our generation? We don't know the word of God. Do you know? Have you ever heard of the dark ages? Do you know what the dark ages were? It was a time where people did not know the word of God. And the people in the upper echelon that were deciding what was right and wrong did not want the people knowing the word of God. Because if you don't know the word of God, you are at the mercy of what somebody else says is the word of God. Because if you don't know it for yourself, you don't know whether it's truth or not. Because you don't know the word enough to compare truth to it. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We are willfully marching into the dark ages of our own demise while there is a Bible available on every single phone. There's a free app. Those men were risking their lives so that they could put the word of God in as many hands as possible so that they would be free. We are willfully as a nation and countries willfully heading into the dark ages because we refuse to give ourselves to study of the word of God. Study to show thyself approved. A workman if needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He said he made it a commandment. His word says, I have esteemed my word above my name. There's nothing above his name. The word says, he said, I've placed my word above my name. The word became flesh. When Jesus was tempted, he, it is written, it is written. He used the word. That's why you got so many people going crazy. I got a revelation. I got a revelation. You want to know why? So many crazy, ridiculous revelations. I hear them and I'm like, that's a wonderful revelation. There's just one problem with your revelation. It goes against the word. So it's not his revelation. His revelation to you will never contradict his word. But if I don't know the word, then I don't know... That he said, if an angel comes to you with another doctrine, let him be a curse. But I don't know if it's another doctrine if I don't know the word. I don't know if somebody's lying to me. I've had people tell me, people that don't even go here, they're like, hey, I, I've heard that you believe this and this. I don't agree with that. I said, well, okay, where's your scripture? Well, I just don't say, no, no, no. We have nothing to talk about. I am not interested and what you feel, I'm not saying, I understand you have feelings and I'm pleased. I am not saying your feelings don't matter and what you're going. But if we're talking about what we must do to be saved, I have zero, zero capacity for what you feel ought to happen if it does not align with the word. I do not care how you feel on an emotional day or whether this happened or what revelation. If it does not agree with the word, it's not about feeling, it's about the word. Musicians, you can get ready. But you don't understand. In my heart, I know this to be true. In the blood pumping vessel of your body, you know this to be true. I chose me you don't know the word or people don't know the word because the word says the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? And further, he says, I, I try the reins of the heart. It amazes me when people are like, I feel it in my heart. You feel it in the most deceitful part? Well, well then what do I do with what I feel? You run it through the word. If it comes, if it comes through completely true, if it matches up, if, 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 if everything fits and lines up with the word of God, okay, then I'll take it. But I'm, the Bible says to try the spirit. 
See whether it be from God. Why did he say that? Because some spirits that come to you with revelations and things are not of God. How do I try it? Through the word. I'm getting off of that. I'm not going to preach both of them. I promise. It's been 30 minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close. I think. He gets to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. I hadn't preached for a while. So there's a lot, a lot built up. He says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils. In thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Just because it looks like it's going good does not mean God's approving. He said, you got some of it down, but you don't know me. Brother McCoy, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to tell you. There are some people in this place, good people, and you're fighting with everything you got, and they, but, you, but you're going through some hard things. You're going through some times in your life, and it's not all smooth roads, and it's not all roses and sunshine on a pretty day with a, while you're driving down the beat. Light. No, you feel like you're in the darkest days of your life, and you're going into the valley and the deserts, and it's rocky, and it feels like everything is just caving in around you, and the enemy's saying, look, God, look, look what God's, God's left you. God don't care about you. I'm telling you, just because it seems like everything's falling, falling apart does not mean that God's not moving and it doesn't mean that God's not in it let me tell you it's like am I still in the word am I still pleasing God check yourself with the word The road less traveled is going to take you through some places that it's going to take some things out of you. The road less traveled is going to bring you through some dark places where you have to learn to trust on him. Because if I don't have faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And can I tell you, without the dark places in life, it is impossible to have faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. How are you supposed to learn that until you get to a place where you've got to walk on his word and his promise because everything else around you looks like it's caving in. That's when you learn to do that. Don't quit because it's hard. Don't quit because it looks wrong. Don't quit because the enemy says, oh, look at that. Oh, Susie Q over there, she ain't fighting any of that and she's not doing what you're doing. You need to go over there. You no. Uh-uh. I'd rather be miserable and saved than comfortable and lost. Come on. Why don't you give that up? You ain't got to pray like that. You ain't got to stay faithful like that. Tithing, now that's just greediness in the church. You don't have to do that. No, but the word says. You don't have to stay separate from the word. But the word says come out from among them and be ye separate. And I will receive you. And you will be my people. And I will be your God. Yeah, but look, it makes you look funny. It makes you look, it makes you stick out like a sore thumb. Yes, but his word says that he's coming for a peculiar people. You don't have to pray that much. But his word says praying always. Come on, why don't you give this up and come on? I will not accept deliverance from my road less traveled. It don't matter if it feels like I'm walking all alone. There's a crowd on the other one. They don't look lonely over there. They're laughing it up and they're having a time of their life. Just be faithful. These roads are going to come out at the same place. But yours is going to change you in the process. This road I'm on, if you're taking the road less traveled, it won't let you stay how you are. It won't let you show up the way you started. There's things, there's dips, and there's curves, and there's hard places. Don't go back and choose an easier one. I'm telling you, this road, while hard to travel, it'll change you. And when you show up before him, the world less traveled will truly make all the difference. Rome, Paul must have known that. Paul said, man, I was so accepted. I fit in with the in crowd. But then God got a hold of me. 
Now I'm getting beaten shipwrecked, in prison, made fun of, chased. I'm, they're after my life. Well, Paul, why don't you go back to how it is? Oh, no, 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 no. You can't get me off the road. Let's try. Yeah, but you don't have to fight all you're fighting. No, I don't have to. I choose to. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course. He compared it to an obstacle. Paul, you don't, you don't have to run this race. You don't have to travel this road. Oh, yes, I do. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus not finances not family, not people that are against me, not when they talk about me, not when they gossip about me, not when I'm offended, not when I've been treated wrong, no, not on my darkest day, not when I'm lonely, not when I'm depressed, not when I feel like I'm all, nothing, nothing, not my mama, not my daddy, not a husband, not a wife, not a child, not a boss, not a president, nothing, nobody. Yes, 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 we are all going to stand in judgment, but I want to stand there different. I don't want to be who I used to be. I want to stand in his presence knowing that every dark day of my life got something out of me that didn't need to be there. Every low point got something out of me that didn't need to be there. He told him, he said, you did run well. What did hinder you? You were doing so good. You were fighting such a good fight. You started off so well. The Bible says Saul was changed. God gave him a new heart. God touched him. He changed him. But Saul got caught up again with the things of this world. Demas had an anointing on his life, a calling on his life. Demas... But he fell back in love with this world. Saul, you did good. You started out on that road less traveled. But somewhere along the way, you decided, I don't want to fight this much to get by. I want to find easy street. Demas, you were doing so well. But then it's, I'm going to take the other road. Demas hath forsaken me. I want to be changed, but I never want to go back. Oh, well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm facing. I don't. I don't know why good people, precious people, fight the battles they fight. The only consolation I can give you is that the records book are not tallied up when you breathe your last breath. Whether you have made it in your life and done well will not depend on how much is in your account or the sign on your car or the number of square foot in your home. But it will we we stand before him. There will be those that never had a penny to their name. There will be those that lived in tents and roamed wildernesses but when they stand before him it will all make sense 
a sweet, sweet lady I grew up with. My parents were a sweet, sweet black lady. One of the prayingest people I've ever met in my life. Sweetest people I've ever met. She got beat for going to church. You have to tell the story of Sister Only sometime. Husband threatened her life and beat her just for going to church. And I remember one day we were talking and I was preaching about God's favor. She came up to me and I told her, I said, oh, God's favor on your life. Every every, Every time you pray, God answers. Every time you do, oh, my goodness, what I do to have that. And she came up to me after service. She said, Brother Joel, sometimes favor doesn't feel like favor. Sometimes favor doesn't feel like favor. And sometimes the right road isn't the easy road. And sometimes the darkest battle you're facing is not because you're wrong, but because you are standing for what's right. And sometimes the battlefield that you're facing and the the war that you are fighting in your mind is not because you are wrong. It is because you are standing for what's right. The reason you feel under attack is not because you're out of the will of God, but because you are standing in opposition of every spirit of hell that wants to walk through the front door of your home and come after your family. You're not fighting because you're messed up. You're fighting because you're right where you're supposed to be. The road less traveled. It takes guts. Takes everything you got. But it'll make all the difference. It'll make all the difference. I came here tonight because God wants to encourage somebody. Don't you dare throw in the towel because it feels like everything's going wrong. It's not going wrong. It's because you're going right that you're fighting. Don't you dare stop. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare turn around. You're in the middle of a miracle. Don't you dare stop. Don't let the enemy twist your situation. Don't let the enemy discourage you. That's all he knows how to do. Don't let him steal your miracle. Keep walking. Keep praying. Keep being faithful. Oh, come on. Hey, if that's you, if that's your number, why don't you come on right now? God's trying to strengthen somebody tonight. God's wanting to encourage. Oh, a pastor, it seems like every time I decide to do right, everything falls apart. That doesn't mean you're not doing right. That doesn't mean you're not where you're supposed to be. The greatest danger, I would say, would be if you're not fighting. The road less traveled. It'll make you let some things go. It'll make you give some things to God. You can't be who you've always been on the road less traveled. Something's got to change. I can't do it my way on the road less traveled. I can't do what makes sense to my flesh not on the road less traveled. It'll cost me everything. But it's worth everything for heaven to be my home. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take everything, give me Jesus. I'll trade it all. Don't you give up. Don't you dare turn around. Fight the fight. Keep the faith. Stay the course. Keep praying. Keep being faithful. Don't you dare give up.
Joy. 
the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor McCoy, for a wonderful message tonight. Don't forget, if you haven't registered for a ladies retreat, it's not too late. You can do that tonight before you leave or do it right from your cell phone. Cost is only $5. Love and appreciate every one of you and happy birthday, Pastor McCoy. <laughs>